Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So, late yesterday in my region was the big day, where Microsoft now has officially started rolling out version 25H2 of Windows 11, which is this year's annual feature update. And this is after a whole lot of different testing taking place over the last couple of weeks in the release preview channel, as I have been posting. And the update is now reaching all users via Windows Update. So I just thought in this video just to show you how you can get your hands on 25H2, a little bit more about the update, and also how you can roll back if you so wish if you don't want the update or there's a problem and you want to roll back to 24H2. And what I'll also do is just a couple of days ago, I posted a video how to update to Windows 11 25H2 from older Windows versions. And I'll leave that video linked down below and in the end screen, because obviously I don't want to rehash all of that. So if you have an older version, go check that video out. Now, first of all, before we have a look at how you can get the update, just to let you know what Microsoft has said regarding the rollout of 25H2. And after the rollout, you will see your version in the About Windows dialog will be changed from whatever it was previously to version 25H2 of Windows 11. Now, the update is rolling out using a small enablement package known as KB5054156. And Microsoft says this, and I'm quoting, Windows 11 versions 24H2 and 25H2 share a common core operating system with an identical set of system files. Therefore, the new features in Windows 11 version 25H2 are included in the latest monthly quality update for Windows 11 version 24H2, but are in an inactive and dormant state. These new features will remain dormant until they are turned on through the enablement package, which as mentioned is a small quick to install what Microsoft is calling a master switch, quote unquote, that activates the Windows 11 version 25H2 features. And the reason for this, Microsoft says the enablement package is a great option for installing a scoped feature update like Windows 11 25H2, as it enables an update from version 24H2 to 25H2 with a single restart reducing update downtime. So that's what Microsoft has to say regarding the update, if you'd like that extra information. Now, just to discuss how you can actually get your hands on the update. Now, the preferred way or method to get 25H2 is if we head into our settings, Windows Update, is to get it when it appears on your Windows Update page as a feature update. Now, just like last year's annual feature update version 24H2, I was not offered version 25H2 at the get-go when it started rolling out late yesterday in my region. Now, if you are like me and you're not seeing it on this page, there are a couple of reasons. First of all, Microsoft controls the rollout, and that's for numerous reasons. One of them is not to overload their servers with everybody downloading the update at once, which could lead to problems. The most common reason is it just hasn't got to your region yet. It's on a staggered rollout. It will eventually get to you over the next coming days and weeks or even months. And why it might only get to you over the next coming months is because there could be a compatibility safeguard hold on your device that is preventing Microsoft from pushing the update to your Windows Update page because there could be an issue that is causing a problem in regards to an app or a driver or a piece of hardware. And obviously it could cause problems. So Microsoft is holding off the update until that issue is resolved, either by a driver update or a manufacturer's firmware update. You get the general idea. And also what you need to do is you need to make sure that this toggle, get the latest updates as soon as they are available, is turned on. If you're not seeing the update, because if you haven't got this, there's a good chance you're not going to get it offered to you at the get go. And then what you can do after that's on, you can check or seek for updates. It's also known. And I will just come back at regular intervals and make sure to make sure that it's offered on this update page, which is the safest option and the recommended option. Now, if you are like me once again, and you did not see it on this page, there are other ways you can get your hands on the 25H2 annual update. 
if it's not been offered via Windows Update. And that's via the Download Windows 11 Microsoft website. So to head to that, we're just going to head into my Edge browser quickly. Head into my favorites, download Windows 11. And here we go. And the first thing you'll notice on this page is the current release has been updated from 24H2, which I did say would be an early sign when this gets changed that the update is rolling out. So it's now Windows 11 2025 update version 25H2. Now, because I wasn't offered the update through Windows Update, I obviously needed to install the feature update for the purpose of this channel to keep you guys informed. So just like 24H2, I used the next best method, which is the Windows 11 Installation Assistant. Now, although this is a good plan B, I still recommend you wait until it's offered via Windows Update because that is the safest option to prevent problems. But if you want to get your hands on it sooner than later, then I would suggest then using the Installation Assistant which is a little package that will be downloaded. It's about four megabytes in size. And you run that, you follow the prompts, and that will start the download and the installation and is a good plan B. And if you don't want to use this method, then you can create Windows 11 installation media. If you want to perform a reinstall, a clean install of Windows 11 on a new or used PC, you can use this option. or you can download the ISO image file, which is also now version 25H2. So these are just some alternative methods and ways you can get your hands on 25H2 if it's not been offered via your Windows Update page, as in my case. Now, a couple of things I just want to point out is that I have found that since installing the update, it seems pretty stable to me. It feels a little bit more steady for want of a better word, than with 24H2. Although, I'm saying this very cautiously, I have had a blue screen already with my screen recorder. The first time I launched my screen recorder after updating to 25H2, it blue screened and that was a problem. If you've been viewing this channel, I had very frequently with 24H2, which wasn't a good start, but I must be honest, since it crashed once, I haven't had another blue screen yet today. So I'm going to watch that space very cautiously. But it just feels a little bit better to me than 24H2 was when I first installed 24H2 last year. And 24H2 was a complete system overwrite and upgrade where the system files were replaced and so on. 25H2 isn't, it's just an enablement package. Then something else I did notice is if we head into my file explorer, C drive, I see the rnet pub folder was placed back and made available once installed in 25H2. Now the rnet pub folder was something we covered in detail a couple of months ago, earlier this year. And there was a lot going on with that. Just do a search for rnet pub on the channel if you want more info. And after a lot of confusion of people deleting it and it must so-called mysteriously appearing, Microsoft warned not to delete it for security reasons. And I had deleted it with 24H2 and I see now it's back. So I'm just going to leave it there for what it's worth. And then if we head into our settings, head to privacy and security, on this page, I see that this section here is back to general, where you can change different um, privacy and security settings on this page. Now, this was general, and then Microsoft changed it to something else. For the life of me, I can't remember what it was. And now I see it's back to general. So that's just two little changes I have noticed, just with the update itself rolling out that weren't there with 24H2. Now, with all this said and done, for whatever reason, if you have installed the update and maybe you've run into a problem or it's not as great as you thought it was, you can roll back. 
Remember I said I'd leave that other video regarding updating from older Windows versions like 23H2 and Windows 10. Go check that out for more info. But if you are facing an issue and you want to roll back to your previous version as an example to 24H2, then what you can do is you head to your Windows Update page, you head to Advanced Options, you click on Recovery, and here you'll see Go Back. If this version isn't working, try uninstalling the latest update. And then you'll click on Go Back. And you would follow the prompts in this wizard to roll back. It doesn't take very long. I'm not going to do this because obviously I don't want to roll back. And you click on Next, follow the prompts. And that will roll you back to the previous version as an example, 24H2. Now I'm going to say But here and But in capitals. Because... As you may well know, if we're heading to our C drive, or the drive that the OS is installed on, what it does is it backs up your old version of Windows, as an example, 24H2, to windows.old. And these are all the system files that are needed to roll back. Now, if you have already run a storage sense cleanup, Or you have used the disk cleanup utility, the legacy disk cleanup, to remove this windows.old folder because it will be an option in both of those. Then you will not be able to roll back. And people are tempted to remove that Windows old folder because it's quite big. I mean, mine's about 33, 34 gigabytes, which is quite large. And a lot of people are tempted to delete that to save space. So if you have deleted that using Storage Sense or the Disk Cleanup Utility, you won't be able to roll back using this option, as mentioned. So just take note of that. And another thing is, after 10 days, you won't be able to go back. This will expire and that windows.old folder will be deleted automatically by Microsoft and the Windows operating system. So just a couple of things to keep in mind regarding 25H2, the different ways to get it, how to roll back, and a bit of info regarding the update. So as mentioned, the rollout will expand gradually over the next few months if you haven't received it already, which I recommend waiting for it, as mentioned, through Windows Update. And the reason for this is Microsoft is going to monitor feedback and placing safeguard holds on devices with driver or app incompatibilities, as I said earlier. And obviously, I'll keep you guys posted as to what's happening with 25H2 as the rollout furthers and increases over the next coming weeks and or months. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.